Good morning, good afternoon, brother, sister, Christ, it's today the Lord has made me rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, I'm going to give y'all, share a few dreams with you guys that the Lord had me into and um, gave me with two dreams and gave me with two different scriptures. And I'm going to put them together and give y'all what the Lord given me. Um, the Lord been telling me, don't be consumed with this world, y'all. Keep our eyes on the Lord. I'm keep telling y'all this. Okay, my first dream I had. All I know was I was somewhere like at a s store with some people, right? And I think we were shopping. Because all I seen that, all I seen was, I was at the store, I didn't see me purchase anything. But I seen me walking with a group of people, like a handful of people. And we were walking and I had a bag on my arm. And as I was walking down the street, all of a sudden it got dark and all these uh, falling stars started falling out the sky. And it got dark and all the uh, stars were falling out the sky. And I looked up northern falling stars and I seen like all the stars falling out the sky, right? And it got dark. But look at this. As I, this was happening, I, all I know we just took off running. And we was running and running and running. And I had to go run up this, like I was the last one running because everybody else, I was behind them. And I was running up this hill. And as I was running up this hill, I looked back and I seen this demon was this demon was chasing after me. But as I made it to the top, the demon couldn't get me anymore, right? So the Lord took me to Matthew 24 about the Son of Man coming, right? <clears throat> so I'm gonna give y'all the scripture real quick. Gave me Matthew 24. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened. And the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the power of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds, on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds, which one end of the heaven to the other. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branches have already become tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the door. Or surely I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words by no means will pass away. Then the Lord had me to go back and I looked up before that and it was talking about the great tribulation. And the Lord gave me Luke 21, 29 through 38 and it says, Then he spoke to them in a parable, look at the fig tree and all the fig trees when they are already budding you see and know for yourself that summer is now near so you also when you see these things happening know that the kingdom of god is near uh, surely i say to you this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place heaven and earth will pass away but my words will by no means pass away but take heed that you to yourselves, let your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the earth. Watch therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape, escape all these things that will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. And that when it got me, when the Lord took me to, the, had me to go do research and read that scripture, when I was running, it says, um, pray always that you may count worthy to escape all the things that which are coming to pass. And I was running in a dream, me and these other people, but I count, when I got to the top of the hill, I was safe. But also the Lord told me about, don't be deceived, y'all. And also it says, um, Take heed to yourself. Let your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this, of this life. And the day come on you unexpectedly. And you know the Lord been telling us to take heed, y'all. So he started telling me this, y'all. Be careful who we watching. Do not be deceived. And take heed of his word. And take heed that no man deceive you. Because he also took me back to 
he took me back to with the Antichrist, right? On um, Matthew 24. And it says, um, that got me with the map, took me back to the Great Tribulation. But the Great Tribulation is tied into the next dream he gave me, right? Okay, let me finish this right here. It says, Matthew 24, 15. Y'all know I'm always giving you the word because people don't have the word. It said, therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken to the spoken of by David the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Let Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetops not go down to take anything out of his, his house. And let him who is on the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babes in those days. Then the Lord just told us not take heed and not be caroused with the cares of this world, y'all. Keep our eyes on the Lord and no matter what God got us. Look at this. It says, and pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be a great tribulation such as has not been seen since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh will be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look, here's the Christ. Or there, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive. If possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner room. Do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also is the coming of the Son of Man. For wherever a carcass is, there is eagles that will gather them together. Now look at this. Because the Lord just got me back with this. The eagles will gather together, right? In the Great Tribulation. Because the Lord also got me with this other dream. And it was telling me about, the, and he lead me to about the day of the Lord coming and how birds going to eat. The people, you know, eat the flesh. Okay, let's go to this. So after the Lord gave me this, the Lord gave me this second dream. All I know was, I was at this house. And as I was at this house, it was, I, I was at this house. I went out the backyard, through the back door in the backyard. And all I seen was this big old foot came down. And crushed the house, right, that I was at. I had escaped the house. And I went through this back area of the woods. And as I went to the woods, I ended up at another place. You know, like how you be at, like, the store. And they have all these stores at this. I was at this plaza. And it had a food restaurant. It had stores all connected together. And all I seen was... It was a few of them, these big old giants, and they was tearing down the buildings, right? Tearing down the buildings and stepping on, on this place. And this got me back with the Netflix, y'all. Because the Lord said it's going to be days like Noah. So all I seen was I, it was me and somebody else, we escaped. And as we ran, we went to this, to this look like a, uh, like we was on this island. And as we went through this weeded area, looked like an island weeded area, we ended up on some land. And it was like the water, the sea was out there. But we had went to a boat that was hidden for us, for us to escape this island. Still talking about escaping, right? So I got up and I'm like, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? But the Lord took me to Ezekiel. And this is about fighting um, Gog and Magog, the giants. But the Lord also told me about this is connected to the day, again, connected to what God is telling me about the coming of the Son of Man. And he got me in Revelation, Revelation 19, the mighty fight. The ones that are going to be worshiping the beast who have the marks on the foreheads because the Lord going to have his children sealed. And the Lord took me to Ezekiel 39. Y'all, bear with me. I'm trying to get to y'all what the Lord got me. Because he was talking about the evil nations fighting against Israel. But this is also about those who are going to take the mark of the beast and be with Satan. He's going to fight against it's God's children fighting against Satan. But he got me about the days of Noah and about how it's connected to 
with the fallen angels and people are going to take the worship the beast and the mark of the beast. And the Lord told us the, the days, uh, he just told us about great tribulation, about the days. And this got me with also uh, the great day of fighting with the Armageddon, but the day of the Lord coming back. Do not be deceived, y'all. And don't be a word. And this is why God told us to keep our eyes on him and have our faith in him. Because listening to folks and and falling to fear and the cares of this world, you'll be you'll get lost and you'll take the mark of the beast and you'll be, uh, become an enemy of God. Y'all, we're in the last days. People not understanding this. Okay, let's go to Ezekiel. Because then the Lord got me in Ezekiel, right? 39. And it got me too. You know how they hung Jesus and how they hung all people, hang all people. How they hang us up on the tree. The Lord took me back to that. This is what he going to do to them. They're going to be hung on the tree. And, and um, birds going to come eat the flesh. If the people don't be buried... Y'all, whatever they do to God's people, God going to do to them. Okay, y'all, because Ezekiel 39, this way he got me into Ezekiel 39. And that's about God and my God. And that's God's, God's, and the Lord taught my judgment of God, because also the Lord got me in Revelation, and he taught my judgment. And when the Lord told me about God and my God, and he also told me, like, um, Took me back to the days of Noah. Okay, y'all, let me start right here. Ezekiel 38, and I'm going to uh, 7. Prepare yourselves and be ready, you and all your companies that are gathered about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be visited. In the latter years you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel which had long been de desolate. They were brought, of, brought out of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. You will ascend coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. Now my God and my God, and Satan and his people. Thus said the Lord God, On that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind, and you will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against the land of an unwell village, I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates, to take plunder and take booty and stretch out their hands against the waste places that are again inhabited, and against the people gathered from the nations, who have acquired livestock and goods who dwell in the midst of the land. Sheba, Didin, the merchants of Tarkish, and all the, their young lions will say to you, Have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty and carry away silver and gold to take away the livestock goods and take take away plunder? The Lord also got me with this, like, day to mind, mighty, you know how a giant, we face giants in our life. And also about, you know, how with tribulation and the food and all this stuff going on, don't fear, God got us, y'all. It says, Therefore, son of man, prophesy, say to God, Thus said the Lord God, on that day when my people in is people Israel dwell safely, will you not know it? Then you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples with you, and all of them riding on great horses, a great company, and mighty army. You will come up against my people, Israel, like a cloud, to cover the land. It will be in the latter days that I will bring you against my land, so that the nation may know me. When I am hollowed in you, O oh God, before their eyes, thus said the Lord God, are you he of whom I have spoken in former days by my servant, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied for years in those days that I will bring you against him? Because the Lord used him as a weapon. He said he would use him as a weapon to bring everybody's eyes to him. They would know he is God. And it will come to pass at the same time when God comes against the land of Israel, said the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and for the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake, earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, birds of the heavens, the beasts of the fields, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake in my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the street places the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, 
said the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him to judgment with precedence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, blood raining, great hailstone, fire, and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. They should know that I am the Lord. And you, son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O God, the prince of Rosh, Rosh Meshach, and Tumor. And when I looked at the word Meshach, I looked at that word when it said for with Noah. Meshach means he was one of the son of sons of uh, he was one of the three sons of Noah who survived the flood. Meshach means long, tall, and and drawn by force. So long and tall, that got me like with the, uh, Nephilim. Okay, so it says Meshach and Tumble, and I will turn you around and lead you on, bringing you up from the far north and bring you against the mountains of Israel. Y'all, and you know what? In my dream, I was running up on a hill. It looked like a mountain. It could be the mountain. Then I will knock the bow out of your left hand and cause the arrows to fall out of, the, out of your right hand. You shall fall upon the mountains of Israel, you and your troops and I'm and the peoples who are with you, I will give you to birds of prey of every sort, to the beasts of the field, to devour you. You shall fall on open fields, for I have spoken, said the Lord. And I will send fire, and I will send fire on Magog and on those who live in the security of the coastlands. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people, Israel. And I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nation should know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, said the Lord God. This is the day in which I have spoken. Then those who dwell in the cities of Israel will go out and set, it, set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and bucklers, bows and arrows and javelins and spears, and they will make fire with them for, for seven years. Then they will not take wood from the field, nor cut down any of the forest, because they will make fire with the weapons, and they will plunder those who plunder them, and, pil and pilger, pilger those who pilger them, said the Lord God. Look, this one the Lord got me into about with hanging them, right? It will come to pass in that day that I will give Gog a burial place there in Israel, the valley of those who pass by the east of the sea. And it will obstruct, obstruct travelers because they will bury they will bury Gog and all the multitude. Therefore, they will call it the Valley of Hammon, Gog. For seven months, the house of Israel will bury them in order to cleanse the land. And indeed, all the people of the land will be burying and they will gain we own for it on the day that I am glorified, said the Lord God. They will set apart men regularly employed with help of a search party to pass through the land and bury those bodies remaining on the ground in order to cleanse it. At the end of seven months, they will make search. The search party will pass through the land, and when anyone sees the man bone, he will set a marker by it, and the barriers have buried it in the valley of Ham and Gog. The name of the city will be also named as Hamon. Thus shall be cleansed that day. But when the Lord gave me this, y'all, when he gave me about uh, for seven months, the house of Israel will be burying them and the cleanse of the land. It, and I looked up and did research. He told me to go to Deuteronomy 21, 23. And I went to Deuteronomy 21, 23. Because also, hanging people, the Lord said hang and birds will. Because when that's seven, seven months, everybody ain't going to be able to just bury folks. He going to have the birds to help also to, to get rid of the flesh. <clears throat> okay, 21, 23. Um, Deuteronomy 21, let's go to 22. If a man had committed a sin deserving of death, and he is put to death, and you hung him, and you hung him on a tree, his body should not remain overnight on the tree, but you should surely bury him that day, so that you do not defile the land which the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance, for he who is hung is a curse of God. And this got me back to, this is probably why back in the days, or with the KKK and them, how they was hanging out people. Right here, using this law, right here. 
But the Lord took me to that. Also, with saying they um, ones that they don't, if they should hang, they gonna hang them, and they should be buried that day. But if he don't get to the ones that ain't hang, that ain't able to get hung, that I mean to be buried that day, they gonna be eating. He gonna have them to be eaten by birds. So he's still gonna clean his land. If people don't bury the folks after they get through hanging them, they don't bury them. Then he have the birds that's gonna be able to help clean the land. But. But also, let's go to, he gave me, let's go to Jeremiah 7.33. And it's about the birds. And it's about judgment on the region. It says, let's go to, um, since it's talking about judgment, God's judgment. Let's go to Jeremiah 7.28. So you shall say to them, this is the nation that does not obey the voice of the Lord, their God, nor receive correction. And the Lord told us people are not obeying him. Uh, the Lord told us to take heed of his word and, and listen to him, y'all. Truth has perished and has, look, truth has perished and has been cut off from their mouth. Cut off from your hair and cast, cut off your hair and cast it away and take up your lamentation of desolate heights. For the Lord has rejected and forsaken a generation of his wrath. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight. Says the Lord, they have set their abomination in the house which was called by the name to pollute it. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in fire. Because the Lord did say we're fire. Because the Lord also gave us a warning about Judah, the ones that turned their back on the Lord. And he told them, this is judgment on them. They're going to they be destroyed right along with Satan. And it said fire. Okay, y'all, I'm going this with y'all because he just, I just got that, but I'm going to read the whole thing. Okay, it says, which I did not command, nor did it come into my heart. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, said the Lord, when it will be no more be called Tophet, or the valley of the son of Haman, but the valley of Slaw. <coughs> for they were buried, for they were buried in Tophet, there until there is no room. The corpse of their people would be food for the birds of heaven, for the beasts of the earth, and no one would frighten them away. Then they will cause to cease from the cities of, cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem, and the voice of Mir, and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. I just got that about the birds, but reading all this now, since I'm reading the whole thing. And then Ezekiel 39, 17, and that's what I told y'all about the birds. But let's go to uh, Revelation 19. It's by heaven exalts over Babylon. We know Babylon, we know it's America. Out of these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power belongs to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, because he has judged a great harlot who corrupt the earth with her fornication, and he has avenged on her the blood of his saints, shed by her. Again they say, Alleluia. Her smoke rises up forever and ever, and twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down, worship God, who sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Amen Alleluia. Then, the, then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all his saints, his servants, and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard it was, and I heard as it were in the voice of the great multitude, the sound of many waters and the sound of mighty thunder and saying, Alleluia, for the Lord our God is omnipotent, reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. And to her, to her, it was granted to array it in the fine linen, clean and bright, for the for, for the fine linen in the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, "Right blessed are those who are called to marriage to, to the marriage supper of the Lamb." The Lord gave me the other day about the uh, wedding supper. When he said he called people to the supper, the marrying the. Uh, No, yeah, just so much the Lord talking to me about this. Cause he gave me the other day about the marriage, the wedding, the wedding feast. Let's 
Just look at this, cause look at this. That's why he gave me the wedding feast. The other day he gave me Matthew 22, when he was telling me about Matthew 24. But look at this. This now he's talking about in, in Revelation 19, and it's talking about the wedding supper. Let me finish Revelation 19, then we're gonna go to uh, Matthew 22. Okay, it says, then, then he said to me, right blessed are those who call to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. And as I fell, and I fell at, at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and your, your uh, brethren who have a testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is in the spirit of the, of this prophecy because they bow down to the angel and he told them don't bow down to them to him right you bow down to god but um when he said the marriage supper right <coughs> this what got me because the lord gave me this no wonder thank you lord it says um matthew 22 the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arrayed who, who arranged a marriage for his son who set out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding and they were not willing to come. Again, he set out those servants saying, tell those who are invited. See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fattened calf are killed and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their way. One of his own form, another to his business. And they rest siege his, his servants. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully and killed them. Because the Lord just gave us scripture saying how they, um, they um, murdered his prophets and his people. Y'all. That's why I say all is connected. Just telling us about the day of the Lord. And about don't be deceived. And how they're going to bloodshed. Um, have bloodshed of his people, his prophets and him. And said. Um, and his servants. And, and they spitefully unalived them. But when he heard, when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murders, and burned up the city. Yeah, they after God's children, he doing. He just this is compared the parable of the feast. Just what what, what God's saying happening right now. Then he said to his servant, "The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy." Therefore, go into the highways, and many as you find, invite the wed invite to the wedding. Those servants went out to the highways and gathered together all they who found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with, the get with guests. But when the king came in to see the, the guests, he saw a man there who did not have any wedding garment on. So he said to him, friend, how did you come into here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And then the king said to the servant, bind him. Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into the auto darkness. And there'll be weeping and gashing of teeth, for many are called a few chosen. Still connected about with God coming the last day. They, who, they thrown into hell, weeping and gashing of teeth. But the Lord gave me also about with them with the marks on the forehead. And it says... We're going back on Christ with the um, Christ, the word of um, Revelation 19. Now I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And is and in righteousness, he is, he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire and his head was were many crowns. He had a name written on it that no, no one knew except himself. He was clothed with, robe, with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. And the Lord just told us in Matthew... In Matthew 24, when it says that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. The word of God will never pass away. And the armies in the heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, follow him on the white horses. And out of the mouth goes sharp, a sharp sword, and with, him, and with it he shall strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with iron, a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress and the fire, fireness and wrath of almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Then the Lord got, we're going to keep on going. This is about the beast and his army defeated the Antichrist. I'm talking about Gog and Magog. They, they all connected, y'all. And his army. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he, he cried with a loud voice saying, 
to all the birds that fly in the midst of the heavens, come and gather together for supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of the kings and the flesh of the captains and the flesh of the mighty men, the flesh of horses, and all of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all the people, free and slave, both small and great. And it said, I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in the presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were called... These two were cast into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Then the Lord just gave us in Matthew 24 and told us, Do not be deceived about um, those false Christs and the false prophets who do signs and wonders. And it said, Those who receive a mark and those who worship his image. These two were cast into the alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword which received from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. Okay, let's go to Revelation 20. And it's talking about um, the white throne of judgment. Then I saw a great white throne and on him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there were found no place for them. I saw the dead, small, great, standing before God, and the books were opened. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead was judged according to their works by the living, by the things which were written in the books. Then the sea gave up the dead who were in it. And the death and haze delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. The death, Then death and haze were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. But y'all, the two dreams, the Lord got me with that. But I just had to give this to y'all real quick what the Lord got me into. But how he had me with the two dreams and it's all connected together. Make sure we don't be deceived, y'all. And it says, also the Lord said it telling us, and it's talking about false Christ. Because we know what they coming into, y'all. It's going into than the one that worship the Antichrist. And many going to be deceived about the false signs and miracle signs and wonders. Every miracle sign and wonder is not from God. Everybody's not from God. And he said, if anybody said the Christ, the Christ, you don't. Many of y'all claiming a false Christ. We pray that we able to endure to the end, y'all. And don't be, Lord said in Luke 21, 29 to 28. I mean, 29, Luke 21, 29. Don't be caroused. It says, um, Luke 21, 29 to 28, and what got me right here when the Lord said, but take heed to yourselves. Lest your hearts be weighed down with corrals and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that that, and that, that day come on you unexpectedly. Don't let the cares of this world, don't be let focus on these things of this world, y'all. We know this going to happen. This stuff will wear down people. And all this, you taking care of the world and worried and stressing and fearful what's going on, it will lead you to follow Satan and take the mark of the beast. It, this stuff will lead you from Christ. Because you're going to lose out hope. Jesus Christ came to set us free. And we know everything. The Lord Jesus was preaching the kingdom of heaven. He was preaching about the kingdom, about our Father and His kingdom. What, what all God has everything given to us. We ask and we seek and we shall receive. God will hand open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings to us. Everything goes to our Father. We go and ask Him. He owns everything. That was Jesus was talking to to let people know He was preaching the kingdom of heaven and knowing about our Father. You don't rely on this God, this um, this worldly system. This world is designed for people to fail. Satan is a prince of this world. He was kicked out. He and him and his fallen angels. That's what we against right now, y'all. Keep our eyes on the Lord, y'all. I hope I pray y'all get this as I get this. Cause I'm just trying to give it to y'all as He give it to me, and I'm putting it all together now. Because in two days, I had that one dream. Then the next day, he gave me that dream. And I'm like, Lord, I thought he was, give, he was giving me two separate messages. But they all combined to one. The last day, 
Jesus Christ coming back. And we make sure we endure to the end, y'all. And don't let this stuff and start watching. Keep our eyes on the Lord, y'all. Put our trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean out into our own understanding. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness will be added unto us. We make sure we keep God first, y'all. But this is what we lead into, y'all. We got to understand this. Lord said destruction and the great tribulation. All this stuff is going today. And then that marine kingdom, we just fighting against that all the time, y'all. But they be destroyed. They want people to convert so much over to that. We not worshiping that. Days of Noah. And people don't believe these fallen angels and stuff. This stuff come back. That CERN, all this connected. Physical and spiritually. And there's their mighty giants because they oppress and stronghold God's people. But like Pharaoh, God said, let his people go. But we gonna, we know at the end who's going to win. And we put our trust in our Father. He never leave us or forsake us, y'all. Y'all be blessed. Love y'all. Hello, brothers and sisters, Christ, sister, and Lord, as may we rejoice and be glad. And this is a part two that I'm adding on because the time I've been off of YouTube, the Lord has been speaking to me. And the video I posted at first, the Lord been giving me that for a while. And I've been trying to edit it, but the Lord didn't have me to edit it yet to put it out. Because in the meantime, he been showing me stuff, right? Um, the first video, the Lord was telling me about giants, telling me about the day of the Lord, how he's coming back. Um, and also I posted on the community post and I told you guys that the Lord had me talking about Hurricane Katrina. And he was telling me that um, how my neighbor, I was to end up out of blue talking to my neighbor. Then I end up seeing another girl and she was talking about Hurricane Katrina. And the Lord was telling me about another event and Hurricane Katrina was coming. And the Lord told me with Florida and other places, I mean, um, he told me New Orleans. He was talking about New Orleans and he said other places. But I didn't know right after that he was going to talk about Florida. And now Florida's gone again with a second hurricane, y'all. The Lord already told me that there, another hurricane was going to go to Florida. So we're going to keep people in prayer, y'all. Also on the community post, I posted about this man that did a prophecy a long time ago. And he was talking about Florida. So y'all know there's just so much going on in this world and God's judgment and his wrath. Um, okay. Since the Lord was telling me about my first video I showed, the first video I shared with y'all about giants. So, I have a ring camera right outside my door. And, you know, it always detects human um, movements. But the Lord been showing me something. Because, like, my ring bell was just, my uh, detector was going out. And I'm like, what's going on? Nobody, I see nobody outside. And the Lord has shown me one day I was sitting down. And um, y'all was a big old tree. It, it was like this big old square around this tree across from my house area. And it was lit up like a human form, but the Lord was telling me about giants, right? Because, you know, we, the Lord, we, it's things spiritual that we don't see and things we can see. But we have to be in the spirit. And also, the Lord was showing me, and I was going through my thing. Also, day some this stuff happened. It was like these big old, uh, this big old, look like a portal thing. But I, I, I looked up and it said it was probably like a celestial thing. You know, a big old, um, look like a portal. But out of there was like something came down out of the portal. And then something else was like, it's just so much stuff going on. Y'all around us, we don't even know. And so this happened like a day or so. It happened one day, then it skipped a while, then it happened again. And the Lord was telling me about this instead of telling me about these giants, right? 
people don't understand we're in spiritual warfare and stuff is happening around us and i'm like because i just recently got this camera and the lord had me to get it and then this is what the lord showing me but also it's connected to my dream and the lord showed me this later on like a couple of weeks after he was telling me about uh, the dream that i had with the giants and now telling me about also uh we in spiritual warfare the lord keep telling us this it's stuff around us and we can't even see but god fight for us those things known and unknown things seen and unseen let's put it like them okay and then the lord also been telling me i told you about the hurricane the lord been telling me about sinkholes the lord also been telling me about the uh he had me a revelation 14 about reaping the great the grapes of wrath and you're telling me about also with great tribulation but also about um you reap what you sow and the wrath of god and this one lord been telling me about the wrath of god because also when he had told me about uh the wrath of god in the other video he was telling me also about how you know the coming day of the lord and how he's gonna be fighting the battle but also told me about how birds gonna be eating people but the lord gave me about reaping the great the grapes of wrath but the lord also told us about the great tribulation and told us uh uh to don't be uh consumed about the uh corrals or how he was telling us don't be so stressed out on things of this world because ill the cares of the world we, we give our cares you know we give everything to the lord he carry our burdens don't care don't care the cares of the world on you because when things start happening and stuff going you people get so much in this world that they, they get depressed and lose hope and don't have no faith in the lord you end up be taking the mob Following Satan, taking, doing, be with the Antichrist, taking the mark of the beast. When we know we have to have faith in our Father, because the Lord been told, telling me this week, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness, and all these things be added unto us. At first, if anyone been watching me, the first beginning, the Lord been helping me talk about the kingdom of heaven, right? And the Lord's got me back and talking about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is the door, but a lot of people don't want to hear about Jesus no more. So just how Satan advertised and. He, tell them about giving them them fake riches and and advertising and promising them these things we got to tell all tell people about how good god is our father is that he have a kingdom in heaven that give you everlasting life and then when they want and, and knowing that he what he's able to give to us and as you walk as christ walk and don't have a can of word put our trust in the lord our father and people will see that and they'll want that same thing and wondering how you don't stress and you don't worry and how god provide and all this I'm not saying we're not going to go through no things because lord we pray that we endure to the end but we know our father is with us then you introduce them to jesus because jesus preached the word of god jesus was on here walking and talking about the kingdom of heaven talking about our father so we need to be doing the same thing because people, when soon you say Jesus, they turn off. People, and they don't want to hear about Jesus. They don't want to hear about Yeshua HaMashiach. They don't want to hear. These people out here are dull of hearing. They so much caught up into things now. They not even worried about um, the word of God. They more into what they can get. But just got Jesus is the door. And then if Satan don't want you to have Jesus and we walk as Jesus and the Holy Spirit and resides in us, great as he that's in me, then he in this world, the Lord involved in us, inside of us, the kingdom is in us. We could conquer demons, cast out demons, heal, sick, raise the dead, heal the sick. You could work these things out, but Satan pushing the word, this this darkness, Satan pushing this darkness out that it's going to dim your light. That's why we got to make sure we stay, stay focused in the Lord. I haven't really been on here because the Lord been telling me to make sure I stay planted in Him. It's so much going on on this internet and stuff and distractions and stuff. And y'all, it's, it's, it's pulling people away from God. We got to keep our eyes and keep ourselves planted in the Lord. Much, stuff, much more stuff is coming and many people are not going to make it. And so many people depending on, you know, I was trying to grow fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. But the Lord say, we have to have faith in the Lord. We got to have 100% faith in the Lord like Moses. Hit the rock. We got manna, bread going to be coming out the, um, uh, out the sky. We got to trust and believe that God, this is the days we walking in, y'all. And the Lord also been telling me about reaping the grape, the earth harvest and about reaping the uh, grape of wrath. About the great depression the great tribulation 
Okay, let's read this Revelation 14. Y'all always know the Lord have me with the word because most people don't have the word, don't can't read the word, but the Lord's always tell me, make sure I bring the word. And he told me to give you the scriptures he gave me. Okay, so Revelation 14, we going on 14. Then this is reaping the earth harvest. Then I looked and behold a white cloud, and on the cloud said one like a son of man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, thirst in your thirst in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And what's going on now with earth? So he who sat on the cloud thirsts his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reap. Then another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. He had also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar who had a power over the fire, who had power over fire, and he cried with a loud cry to him who had the sharp sickle, saying, Thus is your sharp sickle, gathering the clusters of the vine of the earth, for your grapes are fully ripe. So the angel thrust his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trampled outside the city, and blood came out of the winepress up to the horse's brittle for 1,600 furloughs. The Lord been telling me about the uh, reaping of the earth and reaping of the harvest, but you reap what you sow. But the Lord also telling me he's separating the reef from the tear. Y'all, there's so much going on. And the Lord been telling me about y'all. About the fraternities and sororities. And he told me about what Kamala Harris. He said she'll Jezebel. And he gonna cast her in sick bed. And her children gonna be unalive. Her and her children gonna be un unalive. He been calling a lot of people from these sororities. sororities and these fraternities. These masonry. And the Lord been calling people out. And they not listening. So God gonna do something to them. He's gonna do something to them. And they following Kamala Harris. And the Lord said she's a Jezebel. She the woman to ride on the beast, but he got me with her, her Jezebel and her children. The fraternity, the divine nine, the fraternity, sororities. And a lot of them into this stuff, y'all, sororities and fraternities. And while this stuff was going on with Biden and it was keeping people distracted, she was behind the scene going to go tell these fraternities and sororities and stuff. Telling them about what's what's the next plan that they rising up, and the Lord told us about the Phoenicians. He told us about these Greeks. He told us about these the fraternity. They rising up, y'all. That's why we keep our eyes on the Lord, and the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but a loving power, sound mind. And we be careful who we listen to, God, y'all, because God didn't give us a spirit of fear. We know with the times we in, we should be excited that we in these times, and then our Father, He's coming back for His children. You know what? One day. I woke up to this song in my spirit. One morning, I woke up and almost folk something. And this song I heard like young. And it's called, We Built This City. We Built This City on Rock and Roll. We Built This City. We Built This City on Rock and Roll. And, y'all, the Lord had me to look at that, that video because that song came in my spirit so many times and like a couple of uh, uh, last week somebody i know was on their phone and that song popped back up and the lord been having me to look into that song and uh, and you just hear that song on the radio you think they talking about rock and roll as i go on the video it's talking about how the government how this world is all fixed up like playing games rock and roll with people okay y'all and with this video when this music this song um we built this city on rock and roll the the name of the uh the music group is called starship now, as you hear this starship, got me talking about it already. I'm talking about like spaceship, starship, fallen angels, right? And then I go on to the um, album, the album cover, and there's nothing but like fallen angels on there. In the video, it's talking about sacrifices. It got the um, it got the uh, what's that? That, that Lula Park, Luna Park, and. And they had about with the six children, and then an adult had got un alive. It was a, a molek, a, a, a sacrifice. You better watch out for this man. In 1979, the Luna Amusement Park opened with a ride called the Ghost Train. The train was supposed to be just a simple roller coaster. However, on June 9th, 
it would catch on fire, and the lives of seven people would be lost. Investigators couldn't find the cause of the fire, but soon the mother of a victim came forth with this picture, with a person in a costume that resembles Moloch, and the primary form of worship to Moloch would be sacrifice. This person is now the primary suspect, and most likely started the fire. And it was said that this person was seen after the fire, walking amongst the crowd, but subsequently was never seen again. Because this man was never caught, the next time you go to an amusement park, it got talking, it's talking about uh, casinos. It said the casinos. Okay, when the casino, they had the casino, the golden nugget, nugget. Why are these people are built off on of masonry and fraternities? All, it's just telling you all what this world is built off of, y'all. They in control of this world. It's talking about uh, stock markets, who counting the cash up under the bar, talking about how people ain't listening, how the government ain't listening to you. It got by Abraham Lincoln on here, and he was a mason. And Because um, I looked up and somebody was at his... Uh, at his uh, burial site, and he got masonry on um, a cemetery, and he got mason on his cemetery. And we know America is built on masonry. And then it said that they pushing America into the schools. They let you know what they're all about, and they doing it. They raised us up into that. Y'all, in this video, it has so much information, and I didn't know. And then I started looking at the video, and the Lord started telling me about it. And then it says something about mamba. It says macaroni plays the mamba. But also, I looked at macaroni. Macaroni was um, a fashion that they had back in the days. Excuse me. They had back in the days in the 18th century. And it was like the tight clothes and stuff. You know how George Washington and them wore? In the days, that was called like the macaroni fashion. But Also, I looked it up, macaroni fashion. It's another way of saying ho hom um, homosexuality, right? So they were saying about sodomy. And about doing, um, you know, sex with animals and all that stuff they did in the days of Noah. And it also got on there gambling. Now it says macaroni plays the mamba. And the mamba had me thinking about with the snake. It's also... Uh, you know, Satan, because they also had back then, uh, what was that LeBron James called? Mamba. The snake, y'all, still connected. It's just a whole thing about them playing games and the people running down the street and the roll of dice. Uncle Sam, the roll of dice came down and they running and the dice following them. Then it was like um, one of it showed a video, a part of the video, uh, a sinkhole. And this one, the Lord was telling me about sinkholes, but also about, uh, it looked like a car that said German on it, and it was going to a sinkhole. And this whole world, the Lord, I was I told her, they, these fallen angels, they, they didn't got on this world and they love places and creating all this stuff they all in politics and everything y'all these people you gotta understand this world this is why lord say don't be a friend of this world this world is all made up this is what god said he do he would destroy this earth they it's all the plot what they got going on playing with people and people all into these with trying to oh fighting for this politician and this politician this world this world is corrupt they all playing a game and you thinking they singing this song rock and roll talking about the music they talking about rocking and roll and playing games with uh this world playing games with people you know i'm get uh, they'll say, say i'm copyrighted on here but i'm gonna post some stuff in here but i'll blink that song and then you go look at it yourself and they said, we built this city, because then the Lord also gave me a scripture, and he was telling me about his new city and his new temple, told me about the kingdom of heaven. It was in Ezekiel. 
He gave me about the new city, the new, the new, the new city, and talking about the temple, the kingdom. The Lord said to him about the kingdom of heaven. Don't be into this world. We need to know what our father is, who we reside in. Satan is a prince of this world, running around just having a field day. Him and his devils. But the Lord told me I reap the great har harvest. We're talking about the great tribulation. It's coming. Too much stuff going on in this world. And you can see the world how it is now, y'all. But I just want to share that with y'all real quick. Now I'm just telling about this right now. About sharing with y'all what the Lord been sharing with me. So I know this is going to be like a long video. But that other video I did that like probably two weeks ago. And then the Lord been showing me stuff. Y'all, it's just too much going on. We got to stay prayed up. And make sure you have your arm on. Make sure that you, um, Psalms 91, Psalms 23, stay prayed up. Keep keep your people prayed up. Pray for Florida. It's just so much. People need to get there. Little while I say, you'll never know when your time up out of here. We need to be trying to walk holy and acceptable and righteous to the Lord at all times, y'all. Repent of your sins. God wrath. God is tired. People don't understand God. You think God don't get angry? Y'all, keep our eyes on the Lord, y'all. Y'all be blessed and love y'all.